I'm going to ask you what it is and why do we care? What is like, what does it do for us? How does it help us? Uh, the motivation for learning it. So with that being said, let's do that treatment with the Dom. Uh, what is the Dom and why care? Um, Kimberly, did you have a chance to, to look at the pre-work? What, what is the Dom? I did. I, I, I didn't look at all of it, but I did. Uh, so in your own words, kind of yeah. what it does. Yeah. Like what, what is, what is, what even is the Dom? Um, it's the main document of the whole entire, um, uh, page, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Let's add to that though. Ryan, what's what's your idea of the DOM? Um, the document object model. And I look at it sort of like a tree of every object on the page, um, parents to children. Yes, that's true. Um, but yeah, and the, that's really good information. The, the fact that it's a tree data structure um, is kind of extra credit. We're not going to focus on that today. But it does sound impressive during an interview. Um, Victor, anything to add? Like if you had to explain to someone what the purpose of the Dom is or, or what the Dom is, how would you explain it? Uh, the Dom is, uh, I guess you use it to more easily access the entirety of your JavaScript and HTML page, uh, documents. Yeah. I, th that's getting closer to where I want to go for your mental model. So I want you to think of the DOM as uh, the browser's interpretation of the HTML after it reads it. So the so Chrome is actually reading the HTML rewrite and then creating this this model of it, and the model is what actually gets displayed in Chrome. So then the second part is the why care. And then Alexander, why should we care about the DOM? What does it, what does it do for us? What does it enable? Uh, I don't think I can put it eloquently because that's a lot of information. Yeah. What is it? Uh, what does it enable? Manipulating it we by manipulating it we can do what uh you can interact with the uh, more user data and things like that yeah uh we can enable interactions and change like anything a anything visible on the page uh i want to say the html and but i always hesitate because you're not actually changing the html but it's kind of it's kind of, it feels like you are. I know I've said this before. Um, I'll just put actually the DOM. So the interpretation of the HTML. So uh, interactions, right? It's the whole motivation that we're, that this bootcamp isn't one week, that we want to enable interactions. So what's a user interaction on, oh God, I'm uh, sorry. I'm in my... Uh, my real um, Chrome, let me change that. That could be dangerous. All right, here's my uh, teaching one. All right, so yeah, with, with Amazon, um, did we do this? Do we do this as an example already? Interactions or did we do YouTube? Do we do Amazon too? Can't remember. I think we did both, didn't we? It, it doesn't matter too much. What's an interaction on Amazon that's only possible through JavaScript and manipulating the DOM? Uh, Sydney. Being able to add to your cart. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if I wanted to add... Uh, 
anything. It doesn't matter. It's my cart. Uh, I don't know. It wants me <laughs> to do a subscription, but you guys get the idea. If I wanted to add to my cart for sure. What's another interaction, Renata? Maybe when you add a review. Yeah, definitely. So the rev all these user reviews are only possible with JavaScript on the DOM, manipulating the DOM. Um, okay. So let's get into it. How do we use the DOM? How do we manipulate it to eventually fuel interactions? We won't actually get to the interaction parts today. That'll be tomorrow. But we're laying the groundwork to even be able to get there. Um, and we're not going to touch the HTML, so we don't have to bother with that. Uh, so because I'm super unoriginal, let's, do, uh, let's make a website that says... Uh, hello world. Uh, Roman, how can I get hello world? And th for this one line of code, let's go ahead and break the rule that we can touch the HTML. Oh, um, you can do, uh, H one tag. Sorry. Your mic hello is, world. is very low. <laughs> You can do an H1 tag and yeah, there say we go. Hello world. Okay. Chrome has read this HTML and interpreted it, interpreted it and created the DOM, right? So here is the DOM, Chrome's interpretation. Uh, in our body tag here, we have this H1, hello world. But today, we're not going to use HTML to modify the DOM. Um, we're going to use JavaScript so we can practice. So how can I do the same thing? I still want hello world, but I, I'm not allowed to touch the HTML source code today. How can I do this? Um, Alex? Console.log? We can, we can do that for sure. Hello world. The problem is I want it to show up as a, as a, in my website and it just shows up in the console. But I still want like a title that says hello world on my on my actual website here. So I want to create an H1 tag and put it into this HTML all through the DOM and JavaScript. What do you think, uh Hara? Um can you do const <laughs> Heading equals uh, document dot create element, and then in the uh, bracket parentheses add h one. Pre yeah. Sorry, parentheses. Yes. Yeah. So in Hara, is this an argument or a parameter? Argument. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. I press save. So the DOM we can modify by accessing this um, object called document. And there's a method on this um, object called create element that we can use to create uh, tags as if we were writing them here. We can just create them from JavaScript. But still, when I press save, I don't see my hello world. So we have some more work to do. So what's... What's another step we need to do here to get our hello world? Uh, Monica? Um, can you use the element that in our HTML property? Uh, possibly we could. Possibly. But, but we can't use element because element isn't defined yet. Oh, okay. But... Console look. 
console log. We, we can console.log heading to see that it actually created that H1, and that looks nice, I guess. But still, I want... My whole goal is that I, I click on elements here, and in the body, there's an H1 tag that says, hello world. That's my goal, to recreate what we so easily did in HTML. You have to um, append it. We are going to have to append it, yeah. But append it to what? Body. Uh, the body? Yeah, so the only thing that exists here is this body. So that's our only choice, really. I mean, technically, the HTML is an element, but we're not going to do that. Um, so I, wanna, I want to append it to this body element so it shows up. It's going to show up right below the script, but we can ignore that. That's not anything pertinent today. But before I can append it to the body, I have to, there's one step I have to do. Uh, Francis? You create a div. Or go ahead, yeah. I was saying you create a div text. No, we don't, uh, we could. All these things we could do, but we don't specifically need to for this very simple objective. Um, do you like H1, like set the, it's like text something and then make it equal hello world? Yeah, we. that's another step we need to do. So this H1 right now doesn't automatically have the text hello world. So we are going to have to do that. So that's a good step. But I, but I didn't call this H1. What did I call the variable, Francis? Oh, um, head, heading. Sorry. Heading. So now that we've created an element, we have all these properties on this element that we can modify it. And one of them, the one Francis was talking about, if we type in text, we see one that's called text content. And then we can set this equal to whatever we want. And in our case, it's hello world. And then we can console.log for a sanity check. Uh, and this actually is looking really good. H1 with hello world. So that's cool. But still, I don't see it on my screen. What else? Opens the class because uh, it's a little well, tricky. Would you do a function? Um, would I do a function? Like fun function. Uh... Yeah, function. I'm yeah, going to use do... a method, which is a function that exists on an object. So I'm going to use functions, but inner I don't need. Tech? Tech inner or inner tech? Uh, you need well, to we... select. You need to target the body. Yeah. So. Body that append. Yeah. If we want to add something to an element, because we the whole idea is that we want to add to this body tag, we want to add the H1 we created, right? So if we want to add something to an element, we first have to find it and save it in a variable. So how can I find the, the body tag first off in my code here and save it in a variable? That's our first step. Um, maybe give it an ID and, or find the element by... Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> those I think those, I those are myself. all things you can do, but I, I want to encourage you guys to use Query Selector uh, mm -hmm. as the one true source of power uh, for finding any element, even though there are a lot of alternatives. Const body, body document. Yeah. Not body. Document dot body. Mm, that might actually work, but I don't want to do that. Query selector. Yeah. So anytime we want to find one item, one element, I would encourage you guys to use query selector. And there's a beautiful reason for this. Uh, let's finish the, this thought and then we'll to talk about why I like query selector so much. What do I what do I put as the argument here if I want to find body? Body. Yeah. In quotes. So just the string body. 
And then I can do a console.log. And actually, I found the body tag. And now that I found it, I can do what to it? Append the heading. Yeah, I can append. We're going to use append child to add things. Parent ch child relationship. When we want to add something to something else, we're going to use append child. And then here, what, what's the argument? Someone might have shattered out as I was blabbing away. What's our what's our argument here? Uh Gyeong? Um uh heading. Yes. Just because we called it heading. We could have called it H1. And finally, <laughs> after all that work, we did what we accomplished when we just did this. That's all. What questions do you have on all those different methods? We created an element, we found another element, and we added an element to another element. Um, Max, on one of the videos, it was saying to use append over append child. Do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, I totally uh, disagree. Append will allow you to do some kind of funky things. Like, um, this shouldn't work. And if I use append there, I have this floating text that isn't actually in, uh, it isn't even in a tag, according to Chrome here. So, uh that like that that in my opinion well i'm sure there's a use case but there's no use case we're going to use um so yeah did did they give a reason why they prefer append he did i just Don't forgot <laughs> no worries. i think he said he it was sends... easier to sorry go ahead zach uh, i was just gonna um say that he said something along the lines of he, you can add like multiple elements at the same time which you can't do oh. with a child Okay. Yeah. So like I said, there's always going to be a use case. Um, yeah. So that might be one of them. But but for all of today, at the very minimum, a pen child is going to be your main go-to. Great question. Other questions? Um, Max, when I was, I think it's the same tutorial that Hara was talking about, um, I had to put in the word defer in the HTML script tag. I'm just wondering what that did to make it work. Um, yeah, I think we talked about this uh, yeah. last week, but basically our code, our synchronous normal code reads top to bottom. So Chrome is busy deciphering each of these lines one at a time. It gets to the script tag and it doesn't finish this, parsing this, it goes right to here. And then what if it what if it comes to this line of code? What's the problem? If it tries to find the body before hitting this, what's the problem, Zach? Well, the, I assume there's no body for it. It doesn't know there's a body there. It doesn't even think to, it exists. It has no yeah, clue sure. about it. So when we say defer, it says do this last. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, I also remember uh, he said that the append uh, child only appends elements, yes. but with the append, you can append uh, strings. Yes. I think that's why. Yes, that's exactly why I don't like it. Because you, I don't think you should be able to just append a floating string. Everything we do should be in enclosed in some kind of a, um, <clears throat> in an element. It, it would uh, be equivalent to doing this in your HTML, which... I can't imagine you would ever do. Uh, I can't imagine why this would be good code, but there's always a use case, <laughs> right? So like that, that would be so ugly if someone submitted that, this floating text, not enclosed in like a P tag or a div. Uh, so, and that's what append would do. 
was he not using it to append it to other things rather than just i'm sure he was that you can it use it oh, for okay. that okay yeah so th th it'll be equivalent if you use it right so that's fine i have no issues if you guys want to if you just want to use a pen for whatever reason i think like that's what word. he was saying uh that he would, in that instance he would use it there because you can do more things with it yeah I don't like the flexibility. I don't like to be able to screw up. I want to be more confined. But it, but it, 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 this isn't a strongly held opinion at all. Uh, I have a question that's slightly related to what you said earlier, not really related to what everybody was just talking about, but like what's yeah. the use or benefit? Like, Because you said like we went through all this work just to get the words hello world to show up when we can just go into the body and type an H1 that says hello world and that's the end of that. Like what's yeah. the benefit of doing all this, all these extra processes on the JavaScript side instead of just typing in hello world in an H1 on the HTML yeah, side. Exactly. So what it, we made, it seems like we took a huge step backwards. We made this process so much harder. And the whole reason is, is line five, the why this is the process that's going to enable us to do all interactions. So if the web was just about looking at like a cooking recipe that you don't interact with it at all and just read, you don't like, you don't comment, you don't search, this wouldn't exist. So the work we're doing now is to enable all interactions. Any questions on that? Okay. Um... Okay, so I'm not satisfied with just hello world. We're going to get really fancy today. And I want to make uh, a picture of the globe. Oh, my God. I didn't practice this, but uh, you guys know what the globe is. Okay, <laughs> whatever. The, the, the globe, the earth. Uh, so how can I get the globe? We'll use an emoji. There it is. So I basically want want this. I don't really care what tag it's in, but I want that. That's my goal. Although it's going to be under the hello world. Why is it? Why is it? Oh, never mind. It's like why is it blue? So that is my goal. Who can help me with that? Um, who are we at? David, any ideas there? Uh, let's see. So maybe create another variable. Yep. Cause we're going to create, um, a globe or a, a paragraph tag. Sorry. This time. What do you want to call it? Um, I don't know. Globe just. Yeah. I globe. like globe equals document dot create element and then a p tag in there yep so i save this still no globe we have more work to do what's another step we need to do kevin uh do uh globe. one more time you broke you broke up a bit globe. Sorry, globe. globe okay uh dot I don't know which one, but whichever one we do. But well, we have so many out. to choose from. What are we? What are you trying to do? Uh, is it much like text? Text. I think I heard you say. Yep. So we're gonna use text content. What do we want that equal to? Um, well, the, what I pasted the the emoji. Um, yeah. Okay, still nothing. We have more work to do. We could console.log it to make sure it looks okay. That looks pretty good, but it's just floating in memory, right? What else do we have to do, Jazz? Um, then you have to append the 
child, the one that we just made. So body dot append child globe. Yeah, very nice. Um, how about for fun? This is a little challenging, but I actually want them lined up. So I want the globe right after. I want the globe right after the hello world. So what can I do here? I might have to modify a few things. How can I get that globe after? Opens the class because this is tricky. Mm -hmm. Can we make them part of the same parent tag somehow? Exactly. Maybe put a div around them? Make them uh, children of a div. So how do we do that? Do you do um, const div equals document uh, dot query selector maybe? Query selector, what are we trying to find? Um, just create element. The body, right? Well, we already found the no. body. We, we the globe. That. Hmm. Let me get rid of these two lines of code because it's going to look, it's going to be different and those will get in our way. So right now we have these, um, we, we've created these yeah. elements, but they're not inserted anywhere. We have this empty uh, DOM with just a body tag. But our goal is to, is to now create a div, put the two elements we created in that div, and then append that div to the body. So we have a little bit of work to do. Would you have to declare the div? We would, yeah. So how would we do that? Um, would it be document.createElement um, parentheses div? Okay, awesome. So we have the div. How do I now add the children to this div? Um, div dot append. Sure, <laughs> we can use append since you, you guys want to use it. What are we appending? That thing in the globe. In the globe, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what did we call hello? We called it heading. Okay. And we call the other one globe. So I pended both of those to the div and we can actually console.log this to look at it. So it's a div with our two elements. This is awesome. And now we have only have one more step we need to do to get it to actually show up on the page. Uh, Rodrigo, do you have a guess? Mm, is it with the query selector? Yeah, we want to add it to the body. So we found the body with query selector here. But now how do we add it to the body? Our div we work so hard to create. Mm, I don't know. Um, Daniel, Lear? Um, would you have to append it to the body? Yes. How do I do that? I, I have a question. Be, uh, actually, um, right there in div.append, um, heading and globe, um, we wouldn't use child there? or we could Because I, I, I thought we were supposed to use append child. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd prefer you guys to use append child. It's just... Uh, uh Oh, okay. Uh, so Sorry, I just I didn't realize that. But in this case, they're doing exactly the same thing. Okay. So not a huge um, So would we do um, body dot append child and then put the the div there? Yep. Uh, we're still not great though because I said my objective is to get the globe to the right of uh, hello world, 
So div is inline or block element, Aaron? Spence. Inline. Div is a block, which is why I created this new, um, sorry, not, not div. The problem here is not our div. The problem here is our h1, which is a block element, and our p tag, which is a block element. And that's why they're, they're taking up their own lines. So I actually want to use Flexbox. So now it's a question of styling. And the crazy thing is from JavaScript, we can control the styling. And there's two different ways we can do this, but this is, uh, this is tricky, so I'll open it to the class. And we'll go through the two different ways though, because it's worth, you'll use them both. What's one way I can easily, or what, I don't even care easy, but I need that globe to the right of hello world. I know, yeah. Renato. And you just do div dot style dot display and equal to flex box. Awesome. So remember, so remember right here our CSS, how we could do like um, div display flex. We can do this from JavaScript, which is crazy, but using this syntax. And now I want to get it so it doesn't look awful, right? <laughs> I want to get it centered. How can I do that? Align items. Yeah. What? So uh, what will I type in here? Div dot style dot align items in camel case. And then center. Um, center, yeah. And then, like you guys know, I, I love to use gap. So I'll just throw in a gap. There we go. All that work, right? For what we could have done so intuitively and so easily in our style. So I actually want to show you guys the other way we could do this. Say we already had this class in our style sheet. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, well, we only have one div, so we could just say div. But, I want. Uh, well, I want to make it more realistic. So, let's say this div has an ID of uh, hello world. So I would normally target it like this, right? And then just repeating those um, properties. So let's say this already exists in my CSS and I want this div to have this styling applied. This is a situation you'll actually encounter a lot today and tomorrow, I think, but definitely today. How can we do that? How can we apply that style that already exists to this div? Thank you. Yep, go ahead. Um, I was gonna say, can you add a class list? Uh, is this a class or an ID? Or uh, an ID. Sorry. Yeah. So basically our goal, when I console.log this div, I want to see that it has an ID of hello world. That's my goal. I want to assign an ID of hello world to this div. So there's a few different ways we can do even this, but opens the class. Document dot get element by ID. We already have our div, so I don't know why. You want to add an attribute. Yeah, yeah. How do I do that though, David? 
Uh, I think here you would do div dot uh, uh, attribute. Yeah, that's to search for and it. Then, and then which one sounds promising? Set attribute. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. And I'm then sure. what's the first argument here? It's whatever the ID name was. I see. So here we can do whatever we want. Um, first off, do you guys remember attributes? So this, this is what we're trying to do right now. Uh, so it, it, we're basically, attributes are what goes in the opening tag, the keys and values. So we're trying to do this from our JavaScript, create this line of code. And we do that with this set attribute method. The first argument is the key or the property ID. And then what's the value I said I wanted, um, David? Uh, hello world. Yeah. Um, and we don't use the, the hashtag. Uh, so now this has the ID of hello world, but it's still not working. Oh, okay. That took me a second. We have a bug. So why do we have this bug? What did we forget to do? Like our homework. Have oh, we, have link, link it to the style link. sheet. Yeah, yeah, we just forgot to link. And there we go. All this work, this hard work to do what we so easily can do uh, from HTML and CSS. So we have those two different options, though, and you're going to use them both today. Or, I mean, it's up to you which you use more. If you can use a mixture that's better for practice. Basically, through JavaScript, you can manipulate HTML and CSS in any way. Even though you're never touching the source code, you're touching JavaScript uh, browser's interpretation of it. Uh, hey, Max, I've got a question. Yeah. Um, so, like, on line 17? 17, yeah. Okay. Are we able to just chain all of that? Um, is it... The way you have it organized, is that because it's a matter of convenience when you do a constant div, when you set it to a variable? So in other words, could I yeah. just say document dot create element dot, uh, you know, append child heading? Could I just put that all on one single line? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think you could then chain the, the next append child, unfortunately. Without having to repeat all yeah. the other dots yeah it, right so yeah, but the my, first line for sure you could do but you okay. I, but i to me that looks ugly but you can't but it will work 100 percent. and so that's the point of setting it to a variable is so that we don't have to keep rewriting mm -hmm. yeah all that exactly over. it's just the convenience okay yeah yeah that's a really that, that's perfectly said yeah it's for our convenience so we can reference it without having to repeat the query selector every time what about adding line breaks in Java? JavaScript? Yeah, JavaScript. Sure. So how can we do what do you mean do you want a line across like a horizontal row or you want an actual line break? Yeah, like uh how you would in HTML like using HR. Okay, yeah. So how can we so I'll turn it to the class. I want just a a, a horizontal line right after our hello world here. I should be able to knock that out pretty easy. How could I do that? Open to the class. Do you, do, you, do you need to define it and then append child it to the body? Yeah, I could, but let's use David's uh, wild technique, right? Of not even using a variable. Let's make that extra challenge. Let's get, let's get weird. How can I do that without using a variable name? Get that HR. Document dot create element. Yeah. What's the argument? HR in quotations. Yeah. And there we go. 
But again, this isn't as readable, right? I, I mean, it's not too bad. But yeah. Um, Max, could you show the alternative version just below it just to compare? Oh, sure. Um, it would just be this. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, so I'm really excited about the hello world we made together. I want to repeat the hello world a hundred times. Yeah. I want to repeat the hello world a hundred times. Uh, what do you think, Ronald? Um, I don't know. It's been a while. Um, but <laughs> I think like we can do you, we can use like a loop. Yes. Uh, like a loop, right? And yeah. we can, this operation go. So we're going to use a loop. Kinds. What kind of loop? Uh, I would say just a regular for loop. So for yeah. let I initialize it to zero, uh, as long as I is less than I think a hundred, mm -hmm. start from zero, I plus plus. And let's just do a sanity um, check console.log I. What do we expect to see Ronald? Zero through 99. Yep. Cool. So we're repeating this block of code a hundred times. That's right. a good start. We have some more work to do though. I want to see hello world a hundred times. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right way, but I think like we can create what can we use inner HTML? Is that okay? Or is that not okay? Uh, technically That's it's, security wise not okay but it's absolutely okay for today and for the entire course but as a as a uh side note to have in the back of your mind like i don't i haven't done a deep dive on this i don't know why but it's like a uh it's known well, to i'll like, show you yeah we can and see if it's wrong or not um i think what you can do is you can so above the for loop let's create another variable like on line 34 or something like that Okay. Let's just call this result and initialize it to, I guess, empty string. That's fine. Empty string. And then <clears throat> I think we need to, okay. So inside the for loop, let's create, let's let, do the, let um, me, let me pause you right there. I think, I think we don't have to, I don't think we have to create any more code. I think we can use the code that's already on the screen okay, and just okay. move it. That's fine. I see. I think. Can okay. you just embody that append child diff? Because we already have. Well, we might have more work to do than that. If we copy this here, yeah, that doesn't. It's just appending the same div a hundred times. It's not creating more divs. Mm. So without creating any more code and just moving lines of code, how can I get a hundred hello worlds? Uh, maybe we can use functions. We could use a function, but using a function, I'd be creating new lines of code. And I'm telling you that I can, I think we can do this without doing that. Can we move that heading, that const heading that we have? Uh, heading, where's heading? Oh yeah, yeah, we will, we will have to move this. Yep. So let's move this to where, Renata? Where do you want it? In the loop. I want, yeah, in the loop. Okay. What else has to move? The globe as well. Yep. Okay. What else has to move? Okay. 
all this. And this, everything, almost everything, except the body tag. There we go. Questions on that? All right, we got to switch gears a little bit um, because one of the challenges... Uh, oh, I know what I want to finish with. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, I had a quick question. So our next objective, I want, uh, it's our, it's our first day at NASA. Sorry, Max. I think someone had a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I did. Um, you said not the body tag. Is it because... Um, we're appending it to the div that we created. Oh, uh, not the body tag because we're just, uh, here, let me get the code back. Okay. So why don't we need to move this into the for loop? That's the one thing we didn't. Yeah, that is the one piece we didn't need to move. And the question is why? Does anyone know? We didn't want to create the body on um, it. So we can, we can reference this variable from outside the loop. And we don't need to keep on finding body. Body is unchanging. All we need to do is append the new div we created to the body. So that's why body doesn't have to move. Oh, Everything okay. else is new. Every iteration, these are all new items. They don't really feel like it because we're repeating the same info, but it's creating new elements. Okay, uh, we're running a little short on time, so um, let's do our final objective. Uh, yeah. Um, you guys might, you might need to do a little bit of Googling today. You have the fundamentals, but yeah, you, you might need a little bit of Googling today skills. Um, anyway, let's try to get through this final one. I want to make a countdown, uh, for NASA to launch. I think we already did this, right? But it's going to be different here. Yeah. So. I basically want um, on my screen for it to go 10 and then a second later go nine, second later go eight, so on and so on. And for this, I need to introduce you to the idea of uh, a timer function we get for free called um, set interval. And this is what's referred to as a higher order function, a function that for its argument can take another function. I think this is our, I think this is our first one, first higher order function. A function whose input is another function. So the first argument is a function. And the second argument is the time in milliseconds. So here I'm going to put a thousand. Let me comment this all out. And then in here, I can run whatever I want. But if I console.log high, every one second, this code is running. And this is the only thing new we need to create this, this countdown. So maybe our first objective should be, let's just get the number 10 on the screen. Maybe that's a good place to start, right? How can I do that? 
How can I just get the number 10? Um, Sarthak? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I just, uh, uh, we're making this timer, so I just want the number 10 to appear on my website. By using DOM? Yes. Um, um, uh, by like this uh, creating uh, element? Yes. Any element? Uh, like a p tag sure and then appending it sure like uh, sounds good guide me through that and document dot create element uh, like p tag uh-huh uh, yes uh, and then like append uh, and then p dot Text content. Yes. Yes, it's equal to 10. Sure. Yeah. And then finally? And then, uh, like, uh, have, you, have you made the body? Uh, um, body dot append child. Yeah, and then I'm realizing we commented out what, though? I think, the uh, like, the body. Yeah, so we need to find again. the body again. Yes, document dot query selector body heading. Yeah, and what's our argument for a pen child? On the p. Yes. P variable. I think so. We got our ten. That's a good first start. Uh, although I'm not going to really want to use a string. I'm probably going to use what what data? Uh, well, okay. Uh, will that actually work if we use a number? Yeah, it still works. Okay, um, so using set interval, can we brainstorm how I can do this countdown? Could you use a for loop inside the set interval function? Uh, maybe, but I don't want to. But maybe. There's a simpler way, I think. Let's start with our send interval, just bones. How often do I want this function to run? Every second, I want the number to change. So how often do we think we want this set interval callback function to, to run? 1,000. Yeah, it's in milliseconds, so we need 1,000. Mm -hmm. And then here, yeah. what's, what element do we want to change? P. We want to change P, and we change that with text content, but what do we make that equal to? Do you want to decrement it? We do, yeah. So instead of hard coding the number 10, what might I do? Um, set it to a variable uh, before. And then instead of 10, what can I put here? Uh, change that to num, and then inside the set interval, you decrement num. Yeah, so here I put num. And every second, this is actually changing, but we don't see anything because I need to do what? Num minus minus. Yeah, except I don't want you guys to use minus minus except in your for loops. And then this is a weird bug. Uh, Mine not equal. Oh, I screwed up. Yeah. There we go. Uh, let me write this the simpler way. And there's our countdown. And for fun, let's make this way bigger. How can I make this P way bigger? Um, Ketzerin. Mm -hmm. I just want my P tag way bigger. P for dot uppercase to uppercase. No, P is an element, not a string. Okay. So we don't have two uppercase. P is a DOM element. 
gonna be numb. Uh, just the word no. numb? No. We want to change the style of our P element. Oh, P dot style dot. To uppercase? No, two uppercase is a method for strings. And this is an HTML element. Font size. Font size, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, is that big enough? Too big? That's fun, right? A real countdown? But what's our bug? What We're going to screw up this launch, right? Because at zero, we wanted to say launch and not negative three, negative four. So what can we do there? I want it to say launch. I don't want it to say negative 15. Write a conditional. Yeah. What would the conditional look like? If num is equal to zero, mm -hmm. and then you can, uh, yeah, but like um, console.log launch. No, I don't want to console.log. I want to see it on All right, and then, a huge screen as we're launching. Yeah, actually. You want to put it through to P. Text content. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to keep going still. Equals what? Um, did you say lift off? Yeah, load launch. Oh, launch. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and then I assume you want it to break out of the I interval. I do, but I don't think we can use the word break. I was, I was actually wondering that. So we have another bug, um, right? It keeps going. If we use break, I, yeah, it even yells at us. We can't use break. So we want to basically clear this interval. And this is more advanced than I actually expected to get with you guys. Um, and I rarely use this, so I'm guessing here, but I think we can do this. And today you won't need to use this. So Would that's return do anything? You can forget it, but I think that will probably work. Yep. Nice, we launched. All right, any final questions on that? Could you also use like an if or an else statement to make it stop? Oh, yeah. So you could. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You could do this. And just put all this code in here. That's a really good point. And then we can simplify it. I feel like that's probably not good because like um, maybe the event listener is still running and it is like it absolutely up. is still running but it looks simpler <laughs> which yeah. is what i care for lecture but ronald is right it is still running and not ideal but i like the way it looks okay. all right other questions we're nearing the end of lecture uh, for today, can we use this method instead of doing the... Uh... Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm not going to check if your timers are still running. I don't I don't care. Can you go over, or like, does the, so the set interval, right? It, the return value of that function returns um, a special ID key, right, for the clear intervals, and then you pass that in, and then it'll, it'll stop it. Yeah, I don't remember specific... what it looks like, but we can console.log it. Yeah. Just, uh, oh, just it's like, literally just the number one. Interesting. So it, it, like Ronald's saying, I think it gives it an ID, each of your timers. But this is all way deeper than you'll need today. 